I'm Steve for This Week With Cars, and today I'm back with my MG CGT. In the last video, I got the car running and took it to a car show. And then the next weekend after that, I chose to drive it on a driving tour with the Iowa British Car Club. So I needed to fix a few things, and I did that off of camera. I put a new alternator on it, and I also changed the wheel nuts because the front of the car had wheel nuts with ears on them, and the back had these safety octagons. I wanted them all to match around the car, so I did switch these, and now this car has the correct safety octagons on all four corners. Today I'd like to continue making the MGC better and more correct. The first thing I'm going to do is get a set of correct wheels and new tires fitted to the car. So these wheels are from MWS. One of the neat things about their wire wheels is this is actually a tubeless design. So they've sealed the areas where the spokes meet the rim so that no air can pass through there. So you don't need to use an inner tube with these wheels. And then for the tires, I have a brand new set of Redestines. And this is in the correct size for the car, which is 165 HR15. I have these tires fitted to a lot of my cars. I feel this is the best touring tire if you're going for an original look. There are tires that are more correct for originality on cars, but if you're actually going to drive them, these are a tire that give you great traction. Now this one's ready to balance. I have all four tires done. Now I can put it on the splined balancer. This is a good demonstration of why I am changing the wheels and the tires. This is the correct size tire and you can see how much taller this is than the tires that are fitted to the car right now. An MGC is already hard to turn if you're in parking lots and things like that. So having a tire like this on it is really going to make it a lot worse. The car is going to drive much better with the correct tire on it. And these big wheels are something that sets the MGC apart from the MGB. So having these wheels and tires on this car, I think is going to make the car look much more like the Grand Tour that it actually is. The MWS wheels come already pre-greased on the inside, so I don't need to put any grease on these before I put them on the car. I just need to take the nut off, get the old wheel off, and put these on. To remove wheels held on with the safety octagons, you will need a wrench. And that's the one downside to a nut that has the ears on it. All you need for the nuts that have ears is your hammer. You hammer directly onto the nut. But you will have to have a wrench, so you need to remember to carry these with you if you have this style of nut. One of the nice things about having wire wheels is that you can easily remove the wheel with it off the ground. You don't have to have it onto the surface in order to break the lug nuts. The hits from the hammer give it enough of a shock that you can usually break these loose without the tires being on the ground.
I like to tighten the wheel up as much as you can with it in the air. That way you're not getting any binding between the road surface and the tire. You want to make sure that the nut sucks the wheel on as far as it can. And if you're doing it with it on the ground, the threads might bind up before you have the wheel seated correctly. The correct tires are probably an inch taller. And the nice thing about this car, the speedometer is driven by GPS. So changing the height of my tire isn't going to affect the accuracy of the GPS at all. But if you have a mechanically driven GPS, changing the tire size is definitely going to affect how accurate your speedometer is. Now that the wheels are back on the ground, it's always good to check to make sure the nuts are tight. I think this swap was well worth it. I didn't know how old those old tires were, and this just makes the car look fantastic. To finish fixing it the rest of the way, I got this bag of parts from Moss Motors. I'm going to start with this. The turn signal lens right here was cracked when I got the car. So let's put a new one in there and fix that. There's the old broken one. These two pieces of plastic, they slide together. So you must insert them together, put them together like that, and then put them into the chrome housing. You might want to get a new one of these at some point so that it all matches but at least this one now isn't going to be broken. And for this car, I'm not sure how much I want to make not original. If an original piece is still okay, I think I'd rather just leave it on this, on this particular car. Now that it's on the car, I think it looks just fine. For the rest of these parts, we need to move inside the car. Next thing I have is a new dome light. This one looks to be the correct gray in color. Looks like this one sp was spray painted silver by someone. So let's get this out, put the new one in. Looks like those are a bit difficult to push in there. Let's see if the regular wiring tool can push those bullets in. This is the tool that I would normally use to push the British connectors together. Let's see if it can be used here. But yes, looks like that does work. It looks like the light does work. This is such an awkward thing to be doing. There we go. There. Before I screw that up, let me hit the door switch, see if it goes off. And it does. It's working properly. Looking at the dome light that came out, it doesn't look like it was ever that gray color. So is this an aftermarket dome light that someone put in? Or for one of these MGC GTs, is this the correct finish for the bezel on the dome light? I'm not sure, but I'm sure if I put the wrong one in there, you guys will tell me. The last thing that I got is a new fan switch for the blower fan. I did hot wire the fan so it is on all the time. Now if I turn the key on, the blower fan is blowing. 
The fan switch should be right here. You can see that someone has put a headlight switch there. Headlight switch should be over here, which it is. And then down here on the console, we have a fan switch right here. It doesn't seem to do anything. And this position should have the map light switch. So I think someone has come in here, moved a bunch of these switches around, and I will need to replace my non-working fan switch, possibly move the wiring from down here up to here. I'm not exactly sure what someone has done here and why there's two headlight switches in this car. But that will have to wait till next time. It's winter now, so if I'm driving the car, I will want the fan on all the time. So I think I'm going to wait till warmer weather when I actually need to use the switch to get it installed. That's going to be it for today. I think the MGC has come a long way and is looking great. This is already one of my favorite cars that I own. And if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.